welcome to Conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer. It's brought to you by the World Puja Network, and uh, I'd like to thank the people at the World Puja Network for hosting us uh, every two weeks uh, on their show, and, and they're very generous to allow us to have this uh, conversation uh, each uh, week, every other week. And uh, today we're joined by uh, Dr. Ted Loader, who's the science advisor for the Orion Project. And Good afternoon, Steve. And thank you for joining us, Ted, today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, today uh, some of the really uh, wonderful developments that have occurred with an uh, inventor team that we have here in the United States that we're funding, but also about some of the harassment and suppression things that have begun already with that team and what you can do to help protect us and help protect these inventors from this sort of uh, shadowy and uh, criminal activity of uh, harassment that has gone on. And so I think we want to be able to focus on this because uh, we need to have people not only uh, you know, saying prayers for protection for this team and for all of us, but also uh, we have a system set up at the orionproject.org where you can fax to the President of the United States and your congressional representatives a letter where you can tell them about this issue and maybe mention the fact that a number of these sorts of inventors have been historically and are up to the present day being threatened and harassed by some shadowy uh, groups that are tied to uh, paramilitary and governmental groups as well as corporate groups. Uh, who exactly they work for is a very long story, but it's uh, certainly criminal activity. So, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, Dr. Loader has reviewed a, over a 150-page uh, document uh, that was done by a researcher where he'd put together a historical overview of people with amazing breakthroughs in energy generation that would move us away from uh, destroying the planet with oil and gas and coal and the kinds of uh, suppression and harassment that has happened to them. And I think it would be very good, Ted, for you to just briefly review what some of that information that's in there that you've learned about. Actually, it's only 129 pages, so. All right, only. but it's still it's a massive document put together uh, by Gary uh, Vesperman. Uh, it's on the web. Uh, you can look up uh, the article. It's called Energy Invention Suppression Cases. It's actually it, on our website, theorionproject.org. And it just goes through uh, just dozens and dozens and dozens of various uh, suppre- cases with naming names and what happened to various people. Uh, there's a certain uh, similarity to many of the cases, the way people have been suppressed, uh, the usual sort of uh, threats, uh, initial threats, uh, promises to buy money, buy somebody out, and then just general hassle uh, initially, uh, breaking into people's labs, breaking into doors of the place, uh, sometimes disturbing things, sometimes just letting the person know that, hey, we can break into your place any time, uh, and there we are. So it's a it's a very interesting document, and you read this thing, you just uh, end up just shaking your head at the end of it. One of the things that he has in there, which I found rather interesting, is the text of a generic patent secrecy order. Now this comes out of uh, sections 181 to 188 of the United States Patent Code under Title 35, United States Code, actually from uh, early in the 50s. But it's still in uh, case, and uh, it's still in place, I should say. And this is a generic patent secrecy order, but it basically states the following. So if you are an inventor working on one of these technologies and you try to patent something, this, uh, this may or may not have anything to do with the suppression attempts from uh, people breaking into your place. But, for example, you might get this notice saying, you are hereby, I'll just read the first paragraph to give a sense of it. Uh, you are hereby notified that your application, as above identified, has been found to contain subject matter, the unauthorized disclosure of which might be detrimental to the national security. And you are ordered in no wise to publish or disclose the invention or any material information with respect thereto, including here, hither, hitherto unpublished details of the subject matter of said application, obviously written by a lawyer, in any way to any person not cognizant of the invention prior to the date of the order, including blah, 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 uh, without written consent first obtained by the commissioner of patents under penalties, and then it lists all the penalties. 
Oh boy, and that just sort of goes on and on. Um, and, well, and the whole point of this too is I I know people personally who have received these orders and. Um, in fact, one of the men that we were working with that we'd hoped in November would be freed from some of the projects he's connected to in the intelligence community. He was initially thought he would be able to, um, and he all of his inventions had been hit with this kind of order. It was really rather disturbing, and uh, th- and and he his intelligence uh, handlers had said, "Well, we're really going to let you uh, go ahead and and do." Uh, the things that just generate energy just stay out of the anti-gravity and the propulsion area. And uh, then it turned out that he was threatened even from doing that by some people who are outside of his immediate uh, handlers or shepherds, as they call them in the intelligence community. And uh, and he was uh, prohibited from, from helping us do this. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's what's uh, uh, very disturbing. So, and this has happened over the last hundred years, probably several thousand times. I mean, we have someone who worked in the patent office, for example, who said there are somewhere upwards of 4,000 uh, devices and patents that have had this uh, section 181 through 188 used against them to suppress them. So, you know, on the one hand, we have uh, governmental leaders like the current president saying we want a new energy economy and alternative energy. On the other hand, you have these shadowy entities that have corrupted the governmental power structure in the national security state going around clobbering uh, these guys who are in laboratories and trying to do things uh, to help the world. That's all the, I mean, you know, these are real, these are scientists, not, you know, people who, who care about power per se. They're just the scientists who have come up with great inventions. By the way, the uh, in that same article, Gary Vesperman continues on, and states, and this is this is where it gets really just scary for the inventor, the harsh punishment for the violation of this secrecy order should an inventor exploit or even simply discuss his or her invention, which is classified by a patent secrecy order, is 20 years in federal prison. In effect, the U.S. government, or its agencies, I should say, it's not clear who is who here, in effect, the U.S. government brutally and suddenly orders unlucky energy inventors to keep absolutely quiet and not to do any more work on their inventions without compensation for their well-meaning efforts. Thus, a shocked, intellectually shackled and frustrated inventor would end up losing everything he or, her, he or she has invested in his or her invention. The public is also ruthlessly denied any benefits from the invention. So that's the present status of that sort of issue, and it has been used uh, thousands of times, apparently thousands of times. Yeah, it has, absolutely. And 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 then the, the, the other way of it, that it's done is, for example, I mean, let's cut right to the chase, those of you who are on our mailing list. And, and by the way, you can get on the, uh, the orionproject.org, has a way for you to sign up for free email updates and newsletters there. And I suggest that everyone listening who has a concern about the environment and energy and these sort of issues to do so um, is that we just sent out this week, I wrote a little summary about what has happened to this incredible team of people that we are now funding uh, here in the United States. Uh, It's a team of four people um, that are working to build a electromagnetic collector system that will collect the electromagnetic uh, field energy that's in the space around us, that's in the atmosphere around us, and uh, they're looking at possibly having a, a 30 to 70 kilowatt system, which would run any large home quite nicely. And they're working on this. We are funding it. Your contributions to the Orion Project are funding it. But as soon as this team assembled and began to set up their shop in their laboratory, which we are funding a very modest workspace and equipment, Luckily, the uh, inventor and the the other people he's working with had a lot of the machining equipment and what have you, so we did not have to to front end those costs because those are very expensive uh, machines. Um, But they immediately started having surveillance at their homes, and uh, one of them has a child and and a wife, and the other one has a a significant other that that he lives with. And the neighbors came out and found these men out in front of both of their homes, photographing their homes, photographing their property, and sneaking around. And when one neighbor ran out uh, to the main inventor house where this uh, uh, shadowy 
a sort of spook, a, 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 a sort of intelligent spy person was doing this, and by the way, in a gated community, uh, the person who had not come in by a vehicle because he could not get into the gated community fled down the road and jumped over a walled uh, area, a walled part of the compound, and fled. Uh, police reports have been filed because uh, the following day or two, this same, uh, the main inventor's home had an attempted break and entering. Uh, maybe they did enter it um, because there were there damage to the locks and the doors and uh, and some uh, evidence that there was an attempted at breaking and entering or perhaps a successful one that later got uh, where someone just went in and, and looked around. And this all started within literally uh, 24 hours of after I uh, left that city uh, to return back to Virginia. Uh, and the, this uh, inventor that the Orion Project is now funding had this happen. So this is the kind of thing that... Uh, you know, it's not urban myth. This is something that we have multiple witnesses to, and now a police report, and and people to, and you have to say, well, who is doing this? And what I tell people is that there's this group called Majestic in the old days. That's what it was called. That it's sort of a hybrid transnational entity that is both uh, quasi-military and intelligence, and has tentacles in almost every agency of the U.S. government, but is also mostly private. It's, it's connected with, you know, financial interests, oil interests aerospace interests and the military industrial complex and they hire people to do this kind of nonsense and I think frankly that those of you who are listening should uh, contact your members of Congress if this sort of thing is happening and should actually call for a Department of Justice and FBI investigation into it. I think that it's not just this one case I'm referring to now although this is an open and active case but the fact that for example we have, and I'll be happy to provide this name, although I do not want to do so on a radio show, the name of this person who is assigned to uh, an intelligence operation and to a military facility um, that, that I have visited, who, who, who in November, I mean, uh, Dr. Loader was there with me, uh, this man committed to building one of these devices for us within about three months or so, and it would have been the proof that you can run your home and eventually your car off of the energy that's in the uh, space around us and the air around us. And uh, he, after he thought he had permission from his five intelligence shepherds, he was then threatened uh, not to do so and was then taken out of his current location and dropped into a rat hole in, in Iraq. And you know, this is the sort of thing that we have seen in the last few months that I think is going to require that the President of the United States and the Congress investigate to say, who the hell is doing this? And then they start getting pursued. Whoever's doing this kind of harassment and interference with coming out with real solutions for the environment and energy crisis are committing crimes against humanity. In fact, what I have said for years is that they are willfully committing planeticide, and that is the intentional killing or attempt to kill an entire planet's biosphere. And I can't think of a more heinous crime to investigate and to stop. And I think that we have got to begin to ask that our representatives and the executive branch of our government, the president, uh, take an interest in these issues because these are not urban myths. These are things that can be proven. And it needs to, to uh, be reined in by the good people who are in government and the good people who are in law enforcement. There are good people out there, and they have to have this brought to their attention. And like many things, I hate to say this, but the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And that's why it's very important for the thousands of listeners of the World Puja Network that they not be passive in the face of this kind of a fascist, and a neo-Nazi type harassment of innocent civilian inventors and electromagnetic geniuses uh, because we really can't afford to waste another hundred years uh, trying to get a breakthrough event happen here. You know, our civilization is running out of time to do this. And uh, it's time for the public to stand up and say, uh, we've had enough of this and we won't stand for it anymore and we're going to demand that our government provide adequate protection and investigate these types of harassment. Now, you know, one of the disclosure project witnesses 
uh, at disclosureproject.org, you'll see was a man named Colonel uh, Charlie Brown. And people laugh, was that his real name? And he just recently passed away. Wonderful man. I've been at his home, knew his wife. Uh, he had been involved with Project Blue Book and Grudge and a lot of other things. But after he left the Air Force, he became an inventor of these sort of technologies. And he invented an electrostatic system that you can put on a car that would run through a bottle of humidified air and so that the car was getting 20 to 40 percent greater fuel economy. Well, he had his prototype stolen. He had his lab broken into he had harassments, and when he was finally about to make a, a big uh, sort of uh, business deal with some car dealers uh, to put him on all the new cars they were selling back about uh, 1980 or so, where he was staying uh, had a bomb threat called into his room uh, that to, to have him blown up. Now, he did not have that happen, but it was this kind of harassment. Finally, he told me he would put a quarter of a million dollars of his own retirement money into this, which in 1980 was a lot of money. Um, and he just threw his hands up and said, you know what, <laughs> I can't do this by myself, and there's no one protecting me. And so this is, this is someone who was a, you know, a hero of World War II. He was an a Air Force colonel. He was a very solid guy. He was actually a rather conservative man, a uh, family man. And, and, you know, this man is telling you the truth, and you can see it at DisclosureProject.org. And what I tell people is that, you know, this is the kind of thing that we can document and have documented that's been going on for over 100 years uh, where we have become slaves, our entire civilization, to the power elite, the money elite, and the oil and gas and coal uh, super industrial complex, uh, and they play hardball. And I think, frankly, we're going to have to demand that if we really, you know, I mean, <laughs> the present, the current president campaigned on uh, a change we can believe in. Well, here's something that if we could get a little bit of help and a little bit of protection and support, we could make real change happen, where almost uh, overnight we could go from a terminal civilization to a sustainable one with clean, free energy for everyone on the planet. And I think that the people listening to this program need to tell everyone about this World Puja Network interview today and tell them to listen to this and understand how important it is that we all take action because it's only through unified action that uh, you know governmental leaders will, will, will act and, and ultimately we're going to need the help of the good people who are out there. I mean it's not as if everyone in the U.S. government are part of this cabal. It's a tiny, tiny fraction of operators. And uh, for the most part, uh, they don't know. And uh, we got to put it on their radar screen so that they go, well, you know, if this is happening, we need to provide some investigation and support and protection to people like this team that we are now funding, that you are now funding through the Orion Project and through your generous donation so that they don't have their lab broken into and their equipment smashed with sledgehammers and their homes broken into again and again and again. I mean, this has got to stop. And the only way to make it stop is to uh, have your support financially, but also to have your support um, in terms of a public activist uh, a position where you contact the president and contact the members of Congress and and say, you know, this is happening and people who have been victimized by this will, will do legal depositions to that effect if need be. Um, we've already filed a police report, but we need your help. And the reason we need your help financially is that we're now employing two full-time security people embedded with this inventor team so that they can function, but let's face it, uh, there's only so much you know we can fund and do, and we need your help to go forward uh, and and make this uh, create awareness within the government that these things are happening and that we demand to be properly protected from these kind of goon squads that have been deployed. We actually, on if you uh, if you go to the Orion Project website, the OrionProject.org, or you go uh, to uh, Arrow2012.com, on those both of those websites, we actually talk about some of the suppression issues and the various methods that the uh, 
these quasi-shadowy government people have used to suppress uh, inventors. And uh, a recent example that comes to mind, not somebody that uh, the Orion Project is supporting at the present, but it's somebody that, it, because of the way this is going on, is, uh, sort of affects all of us, and that is if you go to the uh, Peswiki Energy website, uh, that Sterling Allen runs uh, just recently, literally within the past few days, there's been a gentleman by the name of Milo who has contacted uh, uh, Sterling Allen and discussed the fact that his lawyer arrived uh, arrived one day at his house with a man, men in, man in black, if you will, or a shadowy person who really didn't identify himself, who basically took his uh, little motor that he was working on, reproducing one of Howard Johnson's motors, um, just a simple little example, but took the thing uh, away from the man and took the, a lot of his papers and stuff. And his lawyer brought this guy into it, and uh, it's now all over the web. So because he squawked, he didn't keep his mouth shut, and uh, that's something that literally happened last week. Uh, there are many, many other cases. I spoke uh, recently within the last month or two. Uh, as any of you know who've listened to the World Puja Network and follow what we're doing, uh, we've been talking with. Uh, the people who have some of Stan Myers, uh, water to fuel, if you will, or water car uh, information. And we've been talking to several of the engineers who worked for him, and I've had a long conversation within the last month or so with a gentleman uh, who was working with Stan uh, Meyer at the time of his death. And he told me, uh, from him to me to you, that within several hours, I think he said within two hours of the time that Stan died, uh, that a lot of materials had been removed from his laboratory, and they didn't know who had done it. And so that is, uh, so somebody was watching very closely and moved in the second they had an opportunity to remove a lot of materials, uh, you know, documents and uh, designs and papers documenting what Stan Meyer had done. So this goes on all the time. Uh, many of you know of the example of Wilhelm Reich, uh, who uh, in the 40s and whatever, 50s, basically was his materials were taken from him. As, uh, he was thrown in jail uh, because of some of the technologies that he was working on, which included both energy technologies as well as healing uh, modalities. So... Well, the, the other thing that uh, I have found is when we began to collect documents from the U.S. government uh, for the Disclosure Project, uh, and actually if you go to disclosureproject.org, there's a, um, a two-hour DVD that has uh, within it a over 500-page briefing document, which is a modified version of the briefing document we had done during the uh, Clinton administration. Um, with some updated materials, and in that are a number of, of U.S. government documents, one of which is a document from the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, demanding that the FBI return or turn over to them the documents that they had stolen from Nikola Tesla's possessions at the time of Nikola Tesla's death that dealt with these sorts of exotic electromagnetic uh, devices. Now, it's been reported for years that it was believed that that happened, but we have the smoking gun document that was uh, actually released under a FOIA request that proves that that had happened because the Pentagon was demanding the FBI turn them over. But the FBI has a black group within it, just like the CIA and, and, and the Department of Defense, for that matter. And the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. So you have these highly compartmented secretive cells within all these uh, three-letter agencies and groups that uh, will not cooperate with the good guys that are in government to let them have access to these things. But here is a document between the Department of Defense and to the FBI demanding that they uh, send those uh, records over to them. Now, I don't know if they ever did. I don't know if that request was ignored. Uh, I don't know if the people it was sent to at the FBI didn't have access to it, because one of the problems with the way that this entire secret world is organized is that you can be the head of the CIA, the Director of Central Intelligence, and be denied access to compartmented so-called black operations going on within your own agency. 
Uh, how do I know this? Because I'm the guy that have sat and done briefings for sitting CIA director and uh, sitting uh, director of the Defense Intelligence Agency, et cetera, and so on. So it, it is a very dysfunctional system where uh, Eisenhower is warning, beware the military-industrial complex because it will become a threat to our democracy and our institutions and our way of life. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but very closely to what Eisenhower said in January of 1961 as he was leaving office. Unfortunately, this is precisely what has happened, and uh, what you have now are people who, uh, for example, when uh, Gordon Cooper wanted to find out, uh, when he wanted to give, I should say, to uh, the Secretary of Defense Cohen uh, information about some of this stuff. Um, and he, as you may have known from the Disclosure Project materials, and, and again, you go to disclosureproject.org and see this. It's in the book, Disclosure, as well as in the uh, DVD uh, video interviews that have Gordon Cooper's statement in it. Uh, Gordon Cooper, back in the 50s, it's, his crew had filmed a landing of an anti-gravity device uh, believed to be of extraterrestrial origin uh, back in 56 on a dry lake bed in Edwards Air Force Base um, or in one of the facilities way out on the range outside of Edwards Air Force Base. And this was daytime, broad daylight. The film was taken. Uh, Gordon Cooper, one of the heroes of the early uh, astronautics uh, field and was one of the, 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 one of the early, I think, Mercury astronauts, uh, actually saw the film, looked at it. He was ordered to put it in a, a package and have a special a Pentagon plane fly it back to the Pentagon, after which he never saw it again. But he knew all the details of it, the dates, the circumstances, everything, so he gave all of that information to the Secretary of Defense for President Clinton, Cohen. Cohen wanted to know about these things and had met with um, one of our witnesses, uh, this astronaut, Gordon Cooper. Well, uh, the Secretary of Defense made inquiries because he wanted to see this film footage, and all he was ever told was that it doesn't exist anymore, no one can find it. And it, the reason for that is because it was in this black compartmented world and had been sequestered away even from our government leaders. This is how dysfunctional this excessive and illegal secrecy has become. Um, and the reason for it is because the people who run the global elites, who run the uh, international finance and petrodollar and oil and gas and industrial systems, really don't want people to have free energy. They don't want us to have devices where we can go from, you know, New York to L.A. Uh, without the, touching a, a surface and without any pollution or fuel or payload, which is what these crafts do. They don't want you to have a home that doesn't have to pay several thousand dollars a year to heat it and cool it and, and uh, what have you, because that metered, controlled, centralized system enriches a rather small number of people, but also keeps the world under the thumb of these elites, but in the consequence of that, creates 80% of the world living in poverty. But the, the geopolitical, the macro geoeconomic and geopolitical consequences of this are enormous, and this is why these extreme measures have been taken and why even a lot of our senior government officials that I have briefed personally uh, and that other people like Gordon Cooper have met with um, have been absolutely denied access, even though you would think, well, gee, this is the guy who's head of the Department of Defense, or this is the guy who's head of the CIA, or this is the senator who's on the Senate Intelligence Committee. It doesn't matter. If they don't want those guys to know, they don't tell them. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, this is also what happened to President Clinton when he tried to find out about these things, is that uh, John Podesta and, and Webster Hubble were looking into these things for – the president, and basically they were told to buzz off. In fact, I was told they had their lives threatened. So I think that what we have to do is say, okay, we're trying to change that dynamic, but what we can do is support financially these sorts of inventors, and hopefully one of them, when we're supporting a number of them right now, one of them will actually make it across the goal line with something that works. But then we're going to need to have you, the people, stand up around us to protect them. 
and all of us, and also demand that the, the good guys in the United States government who are not part of this uh, clandestine and, and illegal activity, that they provide the investigative and protective services so that these technologies can come forward. And I'm, I, I'm, I know that that is key, that the public – all of us, the people who are listening to this program, take action now. Because we may be two months away from taking possession of one of these devices, and we're going to need every one of you to be saying, look, we don't want this one to wither on the vine or to be absconded with or to have uh, these draconian suppressive efforts taken against it. And a lot of this we're going to have to provide ourselves with our own security and funding. That's why we need you to help us with this project financially and to go now to the orionproject.org and make a very generous contribution. On the other hand, we need you also to put your voices along with thousands of others. Uh, we've had almost 5,000 people uh, send uh, faxes to the president and to members of Congress in the last couple of months. Uh, remind, uh, trying to uh, advise them of these uh, new alternative, uh, alternative energy sources. Uh, but we also now need to include in your, your memo to these officials that we need to have some a serious investigation into this, but also protection, active, immediate protection for people who are trying to work on this so that we can call, if we have to, an FBI field office that's in the city where these inventors are and get them to put a team that will do counter surveillance against these guys doing surveillance on our team and who, if they find them breaking and entering, they arrest them and they bring them to justice. See, this is where ultimately – uh, if good people do nothing, it's just like uh, Nazis in, in, in World War II in Hitler's Germany. When good people stood by and did nothing, look at what happened. The whole world was plunged into global uh, holocaust, and, and, and the, the holocaust happened. I think this is why collective action is so important by good people. If good people do nothing, these sorts of social misfits and megalomaniacal power-hungry bastards – uh, excuse my, my, my language, uh, will, will prevail. And I think this is why we have to stand up. And I'm telling people this today because we're having an ongoing threat against our team. And I, the reason that's happening is that I'm highly confident that we found the real McCoy with this particular inventor. There would not be this level of surveillance and there would not be this level of events happening within days of that team assembling unless someone within this uh, clandestine activity knew that this guy could do what he says he's going to do for us. And yet we are not in a protected underground facility. We are not in a military reservation. We do not have a multi-million dollar private security force. We're very vulnerable, and we need people to understand that we need you to make us uh, uh, more s secure through your contributions, but also to report these things to the officials within the government and say, enough is enough. Don't let this happen again. Um, I have to say the silver lining to all this, which has been, as director of the program, this has been rather stressful the last couple of weeks for me personally, um, is that it says that we do really have great potential right now, that the, that the team that we are funding uh, to do this work and to create one of these uh, multi-kilowatt uh, electromagnetic generators has a high chance. It's not a certainty because it's not done yet, but a high chance of success because I do not think that the kind of surveillance and harassment we're seeing would happen if it was someone who was not already known to have the capacity to do this. And, and this is an individual who has worked uh, on a contract basis periodically uh, with various government uh, entities. And while he's not under their control or employ now, uh, we're supporting him now. I think they know what his knowledge and capabilities are. And I also know that he has been approached by a colonel who is part of this majestic group and has been approached literally as we were engaging him, offering him to work for – uh, this colonel and a multi-billionaire uh, to be pulled into a, a covert program. And uh, th this says to me that they would not make that kind of uh, entree and overture to this scientist and physicist. 
unless they were quite certain he knew what he was doing. <laughs> so we have a, a really great opportunity. We need immediately, within the next two weeks, an additional $100,000 to fund this research, and we need also to have you take this action with the uh, uh, fact system we have set up at the orionproject.org and uh, ask that the uh, your representatives and that the president um, assign the, the Department of Justice or order the Department of Justice and the FBI to uh, provide uh, protection and to investigate this matter. Um, and I think that one of the things to remember is that while there are clandestine uh, rogue elements within the FBI and the CIA. Most of the men and women in these agencies are good people, just like most of the people I've met at the Pentagon are very good people, and they're not part of this secret crowd. They're victims of it. And so we need to gather together the good people who are in and out of government, both in the civilian sector and in the government sector, and say, we really do need to create a partnership to make this happen and not only provide the adequate funding, I mean, right now we're doing this on a shoestring. I mean, when I mentioned to most the technology people that we're trying to do this stuff with a few thousand or a couple hundred thousand dollars, they laugh because usually if you're doing an energy research and development program, it's in the tens of millions to hundreds of millions of dollars. But I said, look, we're doing what we can with what we've got. I think we can do it if we get a little more support from you, the listeners and supporters of the World Puja Network and the OrionProject.org, and also if we can get a little bit of protection and support from uh, the government that we, our taxpayers, uh, as taxpayers, support and fund, and who really are answerable to us uh, and not to these special interests. It's so, actually, it's actually, if I may pop in, it's actually very interesting uh, in the fact that there are a number of government government agencies and people who have contacted us asking us for help to identify and uh, obtain some of these technologies. So there are the white hats within the government who are saying, help, help, we need these technologies to support our soldiers in Iraq, to keep them safer, and for multiple diff different uses, and yet we have other aspects of, quote, the government, um, that's a broad term, uh, who are suppressing these sort of things. I'll pop in here with some statistics for a moment and then uh, return to Steve here. Again, back to that uh, Gary Vesperman article or paper that I recommend highly reading if you really want to get into nitty-gritty stuff. He has a few statistics here that might put things, some of these things in, in perspective for you. The cases, uh, he has the energy suppression cases in his article are 95 different uh, uh, incidents. The number of dead, missing, or injured inventors, 20. The number of inventors threatened with death, 32. The number of imprisoned, falsely, 5. Number of incidents in, uh, involving the United States government offices, uh, there must be uh, almost a dozen to 15 different offices in the government who are involved in some way or another, patent office, CIA, FBI, uh, Air Force Army, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 59 different government agencies. And his, his, his data shows there are just about 5,000 uh, inventions classified secret. Um, and it goes on and on. It just to give you some sense of the, the, the breadth and the major, inv major involvement by multiple, multiple groups to keep things as they are, to avoid change at any cost. And, and that's that. right. And it's because the change is so large is what we're talking about. Those are great mm -hmm. statistics. And, and in fact, uh, you know, uh, one of the gentlemen who ran uh, within the Democratic Party for president of the United States last year, uh, who I have met with a number of times, uh, one of his very good friends told me that uh, when this person was working for the Department of Energy, uh, that the, they were at a facility near Oak Ridge uh, National Laboratories in Tennessee, and that there was a facility there where that was just chock full of these kinds of inventions and devices, some of them decades old, that had been uh, uh, seized and sequestered and locked away. There's another inventor 
who has been working in this area and actually worked with some of the aerospace programs building the coils for the so-called ARVs, these anti-gravity electromagnetic devices that were being built in the 50s and 60s. And Ted and I have both been at his laboratory. And he mm-hmm. uh, told us that he was taken by a CIA agent, a, a man whose name I knew from, from my work uh, in bringing out things through the Disclosure Project, to a facility in Wisconsin that used to be an old school that had been cordoned off. And it was filled, multiple floors filled with these kinds of inventions and devices uh, that were just sitting there, some of them almost 100 years old, that if allowed to come out would completely obviate, completely eliminate the need for oil, gas, coal, nuclear energy, pollution, or poverty in the world. This is not an urban myth. This is the fact. And so we're living in a world that is a faint shadow of what it can be. And the only reason these petro-Nazis have been able to get away with this is because a lot of good people haven't joined together in one voice and said, enough, we want these technologies out there, and we're going to support these sorts of wonderful scientists like the Ryan Project is now working with to get them uh, the adequate funding, to get together a laboratory for them, but also to provide uh, adequate security and protection for them. And so we're relying on you guys to help us. We cannot, uh, you know, certainly I by myself cannot do this, uh, nor can Dr. Loader. But if we all combine our resources and our efforts together, we can. And, and it's time for us to do it because really the future of this planet, uh, our ability to move out of this uh, crisis, this sort of existential crisis of of uh, global poverty and terrorism and haves and have-nots and uh, biosphere degradation and resource depletion and global warming and all these things. Uh, These things aren't going to be solved by anything that the current uh, scientists and governments are proposing. In fact, one of the most famous climate change scientists, um, whose name eludes me right now, recently said that all the things that are being proposed in terms of clean coal and biofuels and windmills and solar panels are way too little, too late to be of any great assistance. And that is true. It, it's, people don't want to hear that because everyone wants to think that. And yet we know that these solutions have existed for decades and that our team, here we are with a few thousand dollars, trying to support to do this when the Department of Energy – has spent billions on hot fusion, has spent billions on it, and now they're proposing spending somewhere between 15 and $30 billion of our tax dollars on, quote, clean coal, which is a euphemism. There is no such thing as clean coal. Even if you can burn it cleanly, the way they're mining it is by doing what's called mountaintop removal, MTR, where they blow up the entire mountain and dump all the Uh, excess into the valleys and streams, and they're destroying all of Appalachia doing this, and all the as well as out west. And that's where we're getting the coal. So even if you burn it cleanly, which has not been at all proven to be possible, to extract the darn stuff out of the earth is an environmental holocaust. And we've been doing this since the 1800s. You know, going into the earth and digging out this nasty black stuff and burning it. When since the early 1900s, through the breakthroughs of people like Nikola Tesla and others, we've had these other technologies where we wouldn't have needed to burn any of it. So, you know, this kind of madness is something that has got to uh, change. And this is the change that we really can believe in and that we need to demand that our government help assist us in doing so. But uh, I'm not holding my breath with the government. I think we need to approach them. Ultimately, I think we need to rely on ourselves. We need to say how many people are on the World Puja Network mailing list and the Orion Project. It's got to be in the 100,000 range because we have 30 or 40,000 on our list. If we can get those people to understand how important this is and make a modest contribution, enough people, it will become a river of support and we'll be able to do this uh, on our own. Uh, but it's it's not going to be possible to do with just a few thousand dollars, uh, ultimately. We're going to need a lot more support than that, and I hope you all will help us. And I do think it's important that the people weigh in with their government and let them know that these kinds of uh, criminal activities 
are being perpetrated by a shadowy group that need to be investigated and reined in and just basically told, you're not going to do this anymore. Right. It uh, brings to mind, I was speaking with uh, Ken, Ken Rasmussen about, oh, a couple years ago. And he lives out in California, and he was an, uh, an adventure uh, tinkerer, if you will, uh, more than that. But uh, working with uh, breaking apart water into hydrogen and oxygen, Brown's gas, in order to, uh, but doing it in a very, very efficient way with some very, very high technology. His assistant, and this has been on the web in his description, so I'm not spilling any beans here, but his assistant uh, who worked at a, uh, I believe it was a Navy base on the California coast, That's right. was actually stopped on the base in a, in a sort of a, a quiet private area of the base and forced out of his car and a gun put to his head and said, you shall not work on this anymore. Now, that was on the, on the base, but you know nobody on the base in the regular area of the base knew anything about who these people were. So whoever they were were able to get onto a Navy base and threaten this guy and then basically disappear so that the normal chain of command that one would normally check in with was unaware of them. Correct. So and we're they, talking they, about the integration or that uh, in every barrel there's a rotten apple. Right. And, and I think that what this is one of the things I've said for years is that this clandestine group have tentacles in every agency and many corporations. And they tend to function with an all-access pass. I'm reminded by the story that when uh, President Jimmy Carter was pushing on this issue, and he he had had a so-called UFO sighting, and a sighting of one of these strange objects when he was governor of Georgia. And I actually have his report. And President Carter, when he became president, the first thing he asked Papa Bush was, what are these things and what do you know about it? And uh, Papa Bush didn't deny knowing about it. He said, I'm not going to tell you, because uh, Papa Bush was the outgoing CIA director at the time, as all of you know. Uh, this is W's father, of course, uh, Bush 41. And uh, President Carter was stunned. And so uh, he was told, go get this information from the Congressional Research Service or some other place, and just kind of was brushed off, even though he was the incoming president of the United States. So Carter ordered through the Stanford Research Institute a White House study on all of this, including, I'm sure, the energy aspects of it, because he was a nuclear engineer. I mean, President Carter is a very, very smart man. And ultimately, there were a couple goons with all excess passes made its way all the way into the Oval Office and went up to President Carter and said, Sir, if you would like to complete your first term in office, you will keep your mouth shut about this matter and threaten the President of the United States. This I know for a fact from people who are involved. Now, this is the kind of, the, you know, what kind of criminal group does this? Well, it's the group we've been describing for years, and if you go to our websites, you'll get a pretty good picture of it. But it only has the power it has because it operates nefariously in the dark. And we've been able to get this far because we disclosed so much information that they can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Uh, and we have millions of people who follow what we're doing, and so it's very, very difficult. Now, what is more vulnerable is when we have a team of people, a small team of only four people, working on a device that would uh, deep six <laughs> the need for oil and gas and coal and, and, and you know, basically uh, change that whole dynamic who are working on this, and we need to be sure that we can do adequate protection, but also the instant that this operational, this device becomes operational, we're going to have to stand up uh, and put together a very, very robust team to transport it, to get it tested, to get it replicated, and to get it secured, and to get it in front of the right people so that we can then move it forward down the pathway of uh, creating a technology that can make it out to every man, woman, and child on the planet. This is a huge undertaking, and I don't. I, I keep saying we cannot do this by ourselves. We can do it with enough thousands of people supporting it, not only financially, but also with their voices being heard, because it makes it very difficult for these groups, these goons, to behave the way they do when there's a big billion-watt spotlight on them. What I found from doing the uh, disclosureproject.org is that by having 
a lot of people, and ultimately about a billion people saw the National Press Club event that we did in 2001, almost eight years ago. What, ha what that did was that it made it very, very difficult for this group to do anything too overt. Uh, now, you know, we've had surveillance, but we've had no direct uh, injuries or anything like that. And I think that's because of you the people out there knowing about it. And this is why it's very important for you to network this story to people you know who are concerned about the environment and concerned about uh, Gaia and concerned about humanity's future. And that by networking this to everyone in your email list, and everyone on your Facebook page and everyone in your you know, Twitter page or wherever it is, that what happens is that it, it builds this, this support network that puts attention on what we're doing, which is in and of itself protective. It's not obvious to most people, but it was one of the reasons so many of these, you know, these 5,000 inventors and devices have disappeared is that they were working in obscurity. They were working alone in a lab, even if it was at a national lab or, or a university lab or in their garage or in their workshop or in their company. And they weren't known by... And so what we're doing, trying to do is change that dynamic. And by the way, that's exactly what we did when we started bringing out over 110 top-secret military intelligence and corporate witnesses to these covert programs back about seven or eight years ago, is that we put that information and all those documents in front of so many people that, A, it was dispositive, the proof was there, and, B, there were so many people who saw it and knew about it that it was extremely difficult for them to make a move against us overtly, because if they did, they would have to step out of their little shadowy world into this billion-watt spotlight. So we need you guys to help turn up the voltage, turn up the wattage on this spotlight by networking this to everyone you know uh, and by spreading the word for us. And that's one of the most important things you can all do. It costs nothing to do it. Uh, it's just about networking and sending an email around. And if you sign up and get our email updates, you can then pass those on to all of your friends, family, and coworkers, and colleagues. And, and that's really how you build a network like this. Um, it's very grassroots. Um, and at the same time, right to the president and write to your members of Congress, tell them about these new energy developments, and also ask them for their support and their protection for this sort of initiative. Yes, the uh, the uh, briefing document that we put together that's available on the Orion Project uh, dot org website is a, a very good introduction to, to this whole thing, and is something that can be sent as. Uh, Steve mentioned earlier, uh, can be faxed to congressmen or to governmental officials, but it also can be pr downloaded, printed, and passed among friends. That's or right. Sent uh, through email to people that, who might be interested in this. It's a it's a relatively short document and kind of summarizes uh, not only a little bit of the suppression issues, but also uh, the various technologies that uh, might be available, could be available, are available. Uh, with some research funding and some uh, development and also some of the issues related to the bringing out of these technologies. So it's a good primer uh, for people to start with. Yep, it is. And and one of the things that we also want to do is see that people get that to their members of Congress. You know, each of you who have a member of Congress can set up an appointment uh, for your representative to go in, and you can go with this in hand and say, uh, this is something that I have learned about. There's an uh, enormous amount of credible scientific evidence for this, and we'd like for you to support this and, and, and help with this. So um, that's something that I would encourage everyone to, to do as well. Um, and uh, you can also get it in front of people who might be able to help with funding what we're doing. I mean, we you know, we have a, a little over a $3 million budget to set up our own facility. And until then, you know, the thousands of dollars that we've raised, uh, thanks to all of you, ha have enabled us to just sort of provide a decentralized series of grants to various people who show promise. But the synergy of having everyone in one place under one roof uh, with proper support and equipment uh, working together would be so much more powerful. But unfortunately, you really can't do that with a few 
a couple hundred thousand dollars. It really needs a minimum of of three or four million to be able to put a facility together, hire people full time, buy the equipment. I mean, the equipment list for the laboratory and the machine shop alone is over four hundred thousand dollars. And I think that that what people need to understand is that. Uh, in the meanwhile, we're going to do the best we can. We're not going to give up because of a lack of resources, but it makes it just that much more difficult. And so the other thing that is very helpful by putting this document into the, around is that perhaps there will be someone out there who can make a larger grant um, and contribution to the R&D effort um, while the rest of us are doing you know, what we can financially. So. You know, one other person who is a, who has discussed some of these suppression issues is Dr. Thomas Bearden. Um, in his book, The Energy from the Vacuum, he discusses uh, several incidents that he personally was involved with or witnessed uh, about uh, uh, groups trying to take a certain technology or prevent the technology from being developed further. That's right. That's interesting in fact, reading. I have been at his home, and Dr. Bearden, who was a lieutenant colonel in the Army, um, uh, who's a Ph.D. physicist uh, now, a brilliant man, um, he, he told me about a number of these cases where, uh, in, in one in particular, where there was a, a motor, electromagnetic uh, generator and motor that he was testing. And while he was there, uh, there were criminal elements connected to the Yakuza in Japan who flew in and announced that uh, they were taking over this machine because the guy had taken some funding from Japan and did not know that it was this criminal uh, mafia. And they basically took a controlling interest in it, put him and the device on a jet, and went right back to Japan with it and buried it. Uh, and that you know, sounds like something out of a spy thriller movie, but that actually happened and was witnessed firsthand by Dr. Bearden. So I think that this is exactly the kind of thing we can prevent by being sure that uh, these devils, uh, don't, as he calls them, <laughs> don't control these technologies, but also that enough people know about it that we would stand up to that kind of show of, of criminal enterprise force. And I point out to people that the group, the people doing this are really part of the world's largest RICO, racketeering influence corrupt organization. And I do believe that the uh, U.S. government should open an international RICO investigation into them. But what we need immediately, though, is adequate funding support and adequate protective services so that we can get this done. There will be time later for some of those other issues, but right now we're in an emergency on this planet. Everyone on the planet knows it. And this is really a message of great hope that we have now identified these scientists who are getting this much attention. I mean, I don't think they'd be getting this kind of, of unwanted attention from these elements if they weren't capable of doing some real breakthrough uh, electromagnetic energy work. And uh, I think that that's why we need your help urgently, uh, financially, but also uh, putting your voice to this and letting it be known. So I want to thank all of you who over the last year or so have provided that kind of support and for continuing to do so. And I would ask all of you to please um, let your friends and neighbors and colleagues know about this because this is a, a very fast-breaking development with this particular team uh, that the orionproject.org is funding. And if you want to go and see what I wrote in the most recent update, you can go to the orionproject.org and see that because they are archived there. And this uh, report that Ted has been referring to that has uh, you know over 120 pages of documentation of how these things have been suppressed is also at the orionproject.org. Um, and we have an automatic fax system where at our cost, no cost to you, you can send a fax to the President of the United States as well as to your member of Congress and your two senators, informing them of this issue and asking for their support, and both financial, but also to, to investigate the matter and be sure that these sorts of uh, brilliant scientists and physicists are adequately protected uh, from the criminal elements that are out there. Well, I think we're about up with our hour. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Loder for joining me today and to thank the World Puja Network for allowing us to have this hour to share with you an update on what the orionproject.org is doing. And I want to thank each of you for your really kind support and generous support over the past year so that we've been able to get to this point where I think we, we, we very well may be on the eve of a major breakthrough in energy for the planet. 
Thanks again to all of you and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.